When I put myself in that situation back in 1999, it's really a desperate situation. And I can really feel that even now. You know, I had to live behind my little girl. And my parents were elderly, you know, parents. They were living in a refugee camp. At that moment, there was nobody. I arrived at the center and you look around, new faces, different languages, different ways of dressing. You just sit on your chair. You don't have any friends. You don't know, you know. It was not easy, but the environment and the welcome of the center makes you not having, like, thinking backwards or those depression things. You feel more relaxed. Even things were not very good at that moment, but it was much way easier. As I came in catastrophe when I left my country, when we arrived in, in Australia, the question was, so, what's going to happen? Because I'm not able to, to go back in Burundi. You don't belong to anything. You, you're not living, you're just surviving. We meet every new person that comes to the centre. So we do that first assessment, we try and figure out what is going on for that person. Do they have a legal deadline they need to meet? Do they have somewhere to live? So we're trying to figure out what their immediate needs are and then working on a plan with the other specialist agencies in the centre to, to roll out our services to them. When I spoke to somebody at the centre and they were talking to you like a, another human being, as another normal person. I think that meant so much for me to know that there are other people who care for you and to care for your welfare. Here in the primary health clinic, we see a lot of people with the trauma. We basically take care of them until they're comfortable to look after themselves. The, the philosophy of the clinic is based on wellness and it's a recovery model. The whole purpose is to improve their knowledge of the healthcare system and their bodies and to be part of the broader Australian society. Over the years, the centre's been able to get support and establish a more sort of professional program. That's great because we can provide more comprehensive care for people. The application form for a protection visa is 30 something odd pages of very dense information you're required to provide. And it's only in English, so it's an incredibly complicated process even just to get your name into the system. You're dealing with people who may not have English skills, by definition have experienced and lived in traumatic uh, experiences. It really doesn't leave someone in a strong position to advocate for themselves in a foreign country, in a different culture, uh, without the sort of legal help that you need. I'm here to be a bit of a one-stop shop, help people make applications and to uh, give them sort of ongoing support through that process and in some cases represent them. When you get your protection visa, I say, ah, you, you are born a second time. You can plan for the future and you are no longer in limbo, you are safe, you have your life in front of you. I'm the NEST manager, which stands for Nutrition, Education and Social Support. So the nutrition covers the food bank, the groceries that we give out on a weekly basis, the daily hot lunches. The education is the English classes in the morning. We have computer tutors helping in the afternoon. And then the social support covers a wide range of recreation activities that we have at the centre. We might take people out to the opera house or to the botanic gardens or to the beach and sort of show them how to get to these places, as well as having a bit of fun. <laughs> It's all about having fun. It's increasingly the only pathway for survival and for any kind of financial stability. People need jobs. So we are a team of five staff and we have a team of 40 plus volunteers. We have around 90 employees across a wide range of industries in Sydney. We have a range of courses that are available fee-free from Certificate 1 to Certificate 4. The value for employers working with us is that they get hard-working, dedicated clients and the clients themselves develop great self-esteem. Jobs help us to feel that we're connected, a sense of belonging and also that we're supporting our own families and our communities that we come from. We are a non-for-profit organisation and without the support of our volunteers it wouldn't be possible to support the 3,000 people here at the centre. By utilising the network that the Salam Sikha Centre provided, I was able to, you know, ultimately find a job and able to bring my family. And now we lead a, you know, really wonderful life together. Just to listen to them makes a big difference. 
and I know at the end of the tunnel there is a light. Yeah, it's, it's a family, it's, it's a home. It's fun to come to the A. It's fun to come to the A.